let us open up with a silent word of prayer. Amen. So this morning we'll be looking into kidneys. Um, I trust everyone should have the notes up, the notes now. Our title this morning is kidneys. So to begin, it's the summer, a time for activities and fun in the sun. Whether your day is spent laboring under the sweltering heat, taking a brisk walk, or running around the yard free as a child, an important organ is working in the background trying to minimize the amount of fluid your body is losing. As the temperatures spike, and we can all see from these past couple weeks that we've had, it's been pretty hot, and the week to come. Um, so as the temperatures spike, so do emergency room visits. According to several studies, the increasing temperatures have resulted in a wide range of renal disorders, including acute kidney injury, chronic kidney disease, which is CKD, kidney stones, and urinary tract infections. Because, of course, the kidneys are connected to your urinary tract system, your, your urinary system. One of the major health concerns of extreme heat is heat stroke, which occurs when one cannot adequately control body temperature. Heat strokes can occur during heat waves, especially when combined with exercise or labor in the heat. Heat waves are the most common cause of mortality of all weather-related events in the United States, including tornadoes, hurricanes, and lightning strikes. Heat waves are also among the top 10 worldwide causes of death by natural disasters between 1980 and 2017. And we know that the temperatures are still rising today. So now that we know the, the organ that is working in the background, trying to prevent us from, from being dehydrated and having heat strokes or any um, health concerns, what are the kidneys and where are they located? The human body consists of two kidneys, each roughly the size of a fist. They're located on either side of the spine, parallel to the lowest level of the rib cage. The kidneys act as very efficient filters for ridding the body of waste and toxic substances and returning vitamins, amino acids, which we looked into last week, glucose, hormones, and other vital substances into the bloodstream. The kidneys receive a high blood flow receive a high blood flow and this is filtered by very specialized blood, blood vessels. The fluid that is filtered is then adjusted by a complex series of urine disposing tubes called tubules. In this way, the substance necessary for the good functioning of the body are retained and those that are not needed are excreted through our urine. This is vital to make the body function efficiently. The kidneys filter about 200 quarts of fluid every 24 hours. About two quarts are removed from the body in the form of urine, and about 198 are recovered and returned to the bloodstream. The urine we excrete has been stored in the bladder anywhere from one to eight hours. All the cells in the body are surrounded by a fluid called extracellular fluid. And just as we have extracellular, we also have intracellular fluid for the cells to for the cells of the body to work properly this fluid needs to have a stable composition of salts potassium and sodium and so more often than not the more the first fluid we'll lose is the extracellular because the one that is inside the cell is is more important <clears throat> and so this fluid has uh, is a composition of salts um, like potassium and sodium and um, acidity or ph which all helps to keep our blood in balance or our fluids in at a good balance. And for more information on that, we have a study called a balancing act, which further explains the role of potassium and sodium. 
The kidneys are central to maintaining these correct balances and functioning of all the cells of the body. If the body is in a satisfactory balance, approximately 80% of ingested fluid is excreted within an hour. So now into the functions of the kidneys. They help to remove waste from the body. They remove drugs from the body as well in conjunction with the liver. Um, they help to balance the body's fluids. They help to release hormones that regulate blood pressure, control salts, and water balance. They're also involved in regulating plasma, calcium, and glucose levels. <clears throat> they produce an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong, healthy bones, and they control the production of red blood cells. Now, how do the kidneys become diseased? And for this, we turn to the Bible because... Christ is the, is, is the architect of this body, and so only he can tell us how, how, best it, how it functions, how best to take care of it, and also help us to recognize, as he helps us to see our sins in, um, in the spiritual, he can help us to see so in the natural. So naturally, when we fail to fulfill their design functions, this is an answer to the question, how, how do the kidneys become diseased? When... Um, when they fail to perform their design functions. How does, the sin, how does the sinner know he is unclean? How did David know in Psalms 51 to cry unto the Lord to blot out his, trans and his transgressions? In Psalms 52 verse two, he says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I, verse three and six, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So some of the key things here um, that David points out is that what helps to cleanse is this washing. And what naturally washes us is water. <clears throat> and so disease is likened unto this iniquity, is likened unto sin. And we can see one of the main things from here, what will help to get rid of that and keep the, the kidneys healthy, is fluid for I acknowledge my transgression is my and my sin is ever before me behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom so what are these inward parts that the lord is desiring truth in in the strong's concordance the word inward from h 20 2909 or 2902 uh, means in the sense of overlaying in the plural only the kidneys as being covered Hence, figuratively, the inmost thought inward parts. And so this word inward parts denotes the kidneys. In the hidden part lay the sin, and the defect was revealed. Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. And so... And so it is with the kidneys. In response to this revelation, Daniel saw that he needed to be washed and asked for the cleansing. In this word, wash, meaning to trample, hence to wash, whether literally or including the um, filling process or figuratively fuller washing. Revelation 11, verse 2. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And so this is this washing, connecting it with trample, to trample. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all, all the words of this law. So these secret things are connected to these inward parts. And it is the Lord that reveals the iniquity that lies therein. And so it is also him through his natural remedies that reveals the, um, the, way, the way to better health and the way to cleanse them, which is through this washing. The sins or diseases that are revealed to us belong to us and to our posterity that we may not fall under the same temptations and diseases that plague them. We see this naturally because sins run in families and, and sins run in families and so, and likewise our sins or um, the sins of the fathers. 
So signs of a kidney problem. Um, number one is tiredness, fatigue. The kidneys make a hormone that tells our body to create red blood cells. So less blood cells means your body can't deliver as much oxygen to your muscles and brains as needed. And so if the kidneys are not working properly, um, the amount, the, um, you have less blood cells, which is what is, what is helping to give you the, the oxygen, which is the energy that's needed to do your daily functions. Feeling cold when others are warm. Anemia can make you feel cold all the time, even in a warm room. Shortness of breath after, and this is after very little effort. Extra fluid in the body can build up in the lungs and a shortage of oxygen can leave your body, your body oxygen starved and short for breath, of breath. Feeling faint and dizzy or weak when standing, um, having trouble with memory and concentration, itchy skin, uh, when the kidneys can't flush out toxins, they build up in your blood and the imbalance of the minerals and nutrients over time can lead to mineral and bone disease which can make your skin dry and itchy. And so that is uh, usually, itchy skin is usually connected with the kidneys and the liver. Poor sleep. Um, this damages the organs over time, leading to toxic, toxin buildup, toxic buildup, either or. Um, getting up in the night to urinate often, which can be a sign of a kidney or an adrenal issues because their adrenals are sitting right up top the kidneys. Um, sweating, swelling in the hands and feet, swelling in the hands, feet, ankles, and face or around the eyes. When your kidneys can't get rid of sodium well, fluids will build up around the body. And so depending on the location, this is usually a, a kidney issue, but it can also be uh, with the lymph nodes as well. And so it's either or. And so just from these, well, I'll read the last one, muscle cramps, due to, this is due to an imbalance in the levels of sodium, calcium, potassium, or other electrolytes, which can interrupt, hmm? oh, which can interrupt how your muscles and nerves work. And so we can see just from these symptoms how important it is to keep our kidneys in good health. And one of the best ways we can do that is keeping them washed, which is through in proper intake of fluid. When we don't intake enough fluid, especially in, these, in this type of weather, the toxins build up and it can lead to a lot of these symptoms. Maybe not as major because we're in health reform, but you can start seeing the, the early symptoms and that's, that's what we want to treat. So some natural remedies, and I have three. Number one is proper diet. Um, HL 176.3 says catarrhal difficulties, kidney disease, headache, and heart troubles are the result of immoderate eating. And CD 360.1, the oil in olives is a remedy for constipation and kidney disease. So proper eating, and an example of that is olives, which helps in um, having a proper function of the kidneys. And there's, of course, many other things that we can eat in order to keep them in good health. This is just one example. If you need more, um, feel free to search online and you'll find plenty. Number two is exercise. The studied habits of, this is HL 135, 134.8 to 135. The studied habits of shunning the air and avoiding exercise close the pores. The little mouths through which the body breathes, making, making it impossible to throw off impurities through that channel. The burden of labor is thrown upon the liver, lungs, kidneys, etc. And these internal organs are compelled to do the work of the skin. And so as much as we're tempted to avoid the outdoors in this hot weather, it is not good for us to, to um, close up these little pores, for this is how... Um, the body expels these toxins, but in, so, but in being outside, we must stay hydrated. The blood is not enabled to expel the impurities as it would if active circulation were induced by exercise. As it would. CH 54.1. Moderate exercise every day will impart strength to the muscles, which without exercise become flabby and enfeebled. 
By active exercise in the open air every day, the liver, kidneys, and lungs also will be strengthened to perform their work. Bring to your aid the power of the will, which will resist cold and will give energy to the nervous system. In a short time, you will so realize the benefit of exercise in pure air that you would not live without these blessings. And so as it is in the, as it is in the cold, we should take some, uh, some of these lessons and bring them even in this weather that we're experiencing now. So our third is water. It is important to attend, um, this is also an HBH, um, 177.3 to 178.2. It is important to attend to the solicitation of nature and not retain for any length of time the accumulated urine. The kind of water we use greatly affects the action of the kidneys. Hard water holding the lime in solution is liable to cause maladies most painful to be borne. None but the purest soft water should be used for culinary and drinking purposes. And just an example of good water, uh, some of the best water that's good for us to drink in this, in this heat, um, and at any time, of course, is distilled water. Because it's so good that the Lord added it to his doctrine. My, added it um, as a way to illustrate his doctrine. So that's distilled water. And... Kidneys, our second paragraph. Kidneys maintain the overall fluid balance of your body by regulating and filtering minerals and waste, and waste from food, medications, and toxic substances from the blood. For all these functions, the kidneys need a lot of fluid to help the body detox and flush out all infections. So now, in conjunction with water, now we see water intake of water and using water to bathe and, and excuse me, <laughs> and taking in water internally for food and for drinking. But now we'll see water externally, which is in the use of bathing and hydrotherapy and how that can help. Um, this is how to live, um, 228.3 to 228.4. Whether a person is sick or well, respiration is more free and easy if bathing is practiced. By it, the muscles become more flexible. The body and mind are alike invigorated. The intellect is made brighter, and every faculty becomes livelier. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I'm sure everyone has. But at the end of the day, when you're tired, you don't really feel like doing anything. But as soon as you take a bath, as, you, as soon as you take a refreshing bath, you suddenly have just a little more energy, feel more lively. The bath is a soother of the nerves. It promotes general perspiration, quickens the circulation, overcomes obstructions in the system, and acts beneficially on the kidneys and urinary organs, which are, which um, from the first introduction that we read is what's mostly impacted um, when we're going through a heat stroke or um, in issues like a UTI or PKD. Instead of increasing the liability to cold, a bath properly taken fortifies against cold because the circulation is improved and the uterine organs, which are more or less congested, are relieved. For the blood is brought to the surface and, more, and a more easy and regular flow of blood through all the blood vessels is obtained. And so this portion of saying where it is less congested, you can see how in the heat when we're losing more water, how the body ends up being, especially the kidneys, end up being more congested than usual because there's not, it's, you're losing a lot more water than you would um, on a normal basis. And so a lot of the toxins are not being flushed out. But when we replenish that water, it helps to keep, um, it, helps to keep it less congested. So now into Psalms 51. In um, where we first read, in, in the beginning of Psalms, it was showing us how the, um, what lay in the inward parts, meaning the kidneys, and um, basically the sin, the disease, and filth that was within. And now continuing in that same chapter, we see, how the, we see um, what the Lord says and how to take care of it, how to cleanse it. Verse 7, purge me with hyssop 
and I shall be clean. Wash me, and then I shall be whiter than snow. And so just in that line, the Lord gives us a nice remedy for, um, for kidney issues. Because it says, purge me. We see that we saw that cleansing, which was with the water. And we saw just ahead how water can help um, to keep the kidneys functioning well and help to keep it from congestion. But also the, he introduces now um, an, a helpful herb, which is hyssop, and helping to keep it clean. So verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. So now along with we have water, we have herbs, and now we have men bringing in mental health. Make me to hear joy and gladness. So our mentality, our state of mind, as we know, of course, helps to keep us in good health. Uh, yes, a merry heart doeth good like medicine to the bones. Yeah. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. And so in so doing and doing all of this, the iniquity that was found in the inward parts, the Lord will blot them out. Once we, once we, he lays out the conditions, he lays out the things that we need to do. And then when we follow them, it is up to him, it is him now that comes and blots out these iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressions thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And so as he, as he has given us the, the right things to do, the, 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 as he gives us, when, when we fall into sin, the conditions of reinstatements, he gives us the conditions of, of bringing our body back to health and then he does the rest of the works the work and creates in us a clean heart or making us now a new creature that is in him that is in the health that we sh ought to have been and and that last verse says then i will teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee and so we take that same message that he has given us and give it now to others who are in need of it so that they too can be cleansed so now some of the best fruits and vegetables to combat heat stroke. I've just added just 10 quick ones below and um, the websites below if you need to, if you want to know any more. But the main one, number one, no, it's neither fruit nor vegetable, but still water. Um, number two, watermelon, cucumbers, cucumbers, um, very hydrating and they have they have a lot of the, um, they have some good salts in them that help to keep us um, well hydrated. Kiwis, we know are rich in vitamin C, which is really good for this time. Pears, very juicy. Celery, which is great. Um, celery has a lot of mineral salts in it. It has potassium, it has um, sodium, it has, um, I'm sorry. Oh, so it has a it has a lot of these things that we tend to lose when we drink a lot of water, because at this time, yes, I'm telling you to stay hydrated. But when we're drinking a lot of water, we tend to flush out some of our salts. And so we, it is good for us to add these things back onto, onto in our body so that it can keep it at a good balance. And celery is one of the things that provides us with a lot of these minerals. Um, mint as well and you know mint is usually combined with some of these some of these fruits to make a nice refreshing drink so you can combine it with watermelon or cucumber any of these coconut water fresh coconut water is very nice for the same reasons pineapple is rich in potassium as well as um, some good enzymes to not only help with the gut but also helps us in keeping cool and retaining water and replenishing the body and bitter gourd is another interesting one I found also. And so we can, we can um, maybe incorporate some of these into juices, making sure that we put some into our diets. And if not, one of the simplest things we can do when we take our water, if you have any Celtic, Celtic salt, take a, a crystal or two with your water with every glass or maybe about a quarter teaspoon of salt maybe himalayan or sea salt and add it into a glass of water especially if you're drinking a lot more water in this time so that your salts will be balanced and um are there any questions before we close all right so 
the key factors is in this time, stay hydrated. And the more water you drink, try to replenish back with just a little bit of salt and adding some of these fruits and vegetables to your diet. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had to go over our health portion. We ask that you may please help us to keep to keep um, a better care, good care of this body, for we know that, that our bodies are the temple of God. And just as we would not desecrate your literal temple, um, the, the church, help us to not desecrate this body, that we may keep it in a good, pure, healthy state as best as we can. We pray that as you've shown us in Daniel, as you've shown us in, in Psalms, um, all of the things, all of the natural remedies and things that, that you've given us freely to keep it in good health. We pray, Lord, that you help these things to remain in our minds, that we may exercise them um, so that we may, our bodies may be a, a proper dwelling of your Holy Spirit and that we may keep, our, keep it in good health as well as our mind. Forgive us of our sins and please be with the following speakers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.